Welcome to HashiCon Digital 2020. And thank you, Arman and Mitchell, for that look back into console, one of HashiCorp's most downloaded tools since 2014 with a large community of users. Earlier this year, HashiCorp joined CNCF to help users of CNCF technologies becoming successful with HashiCorp tools as well. And we are really excited about that uh, association now. For those who are new with Consul, Consul is a platform that allows you to discover, automate, and secure services networking across any cloud and runtime platform. And the way we do this is three things. First, uh, the way it works, uh, we decouple IP addresses using service uh, name as identity. Then we automate service networking based on logical services. And finally, we secure service-to-service -service traffic with identity-based security policies. There is a large number of users who have been using console, and you can see the numbers in the monthly downloads as well. So the three use cases that uh, console then serves, the first one is service discovery and health monitoring. The second is network infrastructure automation, and the last is multi-platform service mesh. And we've typically seen console users follow an adoption journey that goes from service discovery to network infrastructure automation to service mesh, Though there are exceptions for certain organizations that start straight with the service mesh. So let's look at the use cases deeply. The first use case is service discovery and health monitoring, which enables registering new services and having it available to others to use rapidly, reducing the time from days to seconds of new services being used. The next use case is network infrastructure automation which enables updating manual network configuration tasks automatically and instantly, allowing for acceleration and application delivery by automating these tasks. And the third use case is multi-platform service mesh, which enables automated and secure service-to-service -service connections, providing insights into service performance and health and improve developer agility by enabling self-service. Today, we are going to cover a number of updates on console, open source, ecosystem, and enterprise. Let's start with the open source. For open source, we released a number of features in the last few releases. We released console 1.8 in May with our own gateway offerings to provide real technical and business value of one, integrating new and existing apps into the mesh with ingress and terminating gateways, and two, securely extending service networking across different data center environments with the ability to federate over the mesh gateway. These enhancements provide a way for organizations to connect their service mesh anywhere using console. Next, let's look at the console ecosystem. Console provides a single control plane to provide consistent application networking experience across a broad ecosystem. Simplified workflows and integrations with a focus on workflows, not technologies. Network infrastructure automation within console enables organizations to move away from manual ticket-based approaches in dynamic IP environments to update configurations and load balances, firewall, as well as software-defined networking devices. It provides a declarative, workflow-driven network automation using Terraform along with a partner program to build a robust ecosystem and the tech preview of this was announced at Partner Summit at HashiCorp earlier this week. Here are some of the customers who are using console. Um, you can see that this is a wide variety of customers across many different verticals uh, as well as geographies. Now let's look at the different packages that console is available in. The first is uh, what is console enterprise. Console is available as an open source for individual practitioners. For larger teams and organizations, we offer a number of enterprise features to increase application resiliency and performance and enhance enterprise compliance and governance. The platform package enables operational simplicity and platform reliability for production environment. Then when you put in the global visibility and scale module, this supports advanced network topologies and enhances performance and resiliency at scale. And finally, the governance and policy module provides standard policies around service naming, registration, ACLs, intentions, etc. The next package you can uh, use for console is the HashiCorp console service on Azure, short form as HCS. Uh, we made HCS generally available in July of this year. 
With HCS, a user can provision dedicated console infrastructure into their Azure subscription directly through the Azure portal. This enables a team to secure application networks across AKS, Azure Compute, and on-premise data centers while offloading the complicated operational aspects to HashiCorp. The end result is a faster migration to Azure for critical workloads with the safety and security guarantees that console can provide in an untrusted network environment. We provide three HCS offerings to enable an individual or an organization of any size to easily consume console as a managed service. For organizations requiring complex multi-cloud architectures or strict application resiliency and organizational compliance not met by a managed service, console can be self-hosted and maintained by an organization using the console enterprise package. And then the last package is HCP console. Uh, we've seen demand for cloud service offerings increase further as Terraform Cloud and HCS on Azure have become increasingly popular. Enterprises who use multiple products or for whom multi-cloud is becoming a necessity have expressed interest in platform solutions. Demand for cloud services is also rising across the application infrastructure market in general. In response to the demand and to meet the needs of HashiCorp customers more holistically, we are introducing HCP as a multi-product, multi-cloud platform. HCP will enable customers to auto-provision fully managed product infrastructure on any cloud. To date, there are over a thousand signups and public data of HCP console is available now. In summary, we see console being used by users to bridge the gap between applications and networks and provide progressive delivery, consistent security and connectivity anywhere. With that introduction to console, let me briefly introduce you to the key new capabilities that we are making available in console 1.9, which focuses on providing an out of box day one experience for service mesh and Kubernetes practitioners. With that, let me hand you over to Cody Diarkman to give you more details on console 1.9. All right, thanks a lot, Nina. Thanks a lot, Mitchell and Armand for that, for that intro. Uh, we're going to jump in and do a little bit of an overview on some of the more detailed features of console 1.9 and then I'm going to show you a little bit of a demo around our uh, custom resource definitions for interacting with Kubernetes and console. So again, as I mentioned previously, my name is Cody Diarkland. I'm a technical product marketing manager for console with HashiCorp. Let's jump in. We like to pick these kind of themes whenever we release a, a version of console. And in this case, uh, the themes we picked are control, observe, and enhance. And these are kind of larger pillars that we use when we start to describe what we've done in this, uh, in this release. From a control perspective, we want to control the way that applications communicate between each other in a little bit more of a fine-grained way than previously possible. Oftentimes, it's more important to understand the way something is communicating as opposed to just if it's allowed or disallowed. And we do that through application aware intentions or layer seven intentions. We'll dive into a little bit more detail on that in, in, a, in a little bit here. Looking at observe, we want to provide a better visualization around the way you see how services communicate in an environment and make it easier for you to get metrics out. And we do that through, again, service mesh visualization. And then from an enhanced perspective, we continue to drive a great first class experience with Kubernetes and we really want to bring in the ability to manage uh, console and Kubernetes via custom resource definitions or CRDs. We're also adding out of the box support for OpenShift. Taking a look at our observability capabilities in 1.9, you can see on the screen a, a screen capture of what our observability will look like in, in this release. And you can see very quickly that operators will be able to come in hit their services and look at a topology view and understand some of the metrics around how services are communicating between one another. We can see very easy ways to determine any sort of problems that are in place and be able to diagnose service to service communication problems. We're also able to capture kind of key metrics and get those out of, out of console to be able to feed into other uh, dashboarding platforms. But in this case, we're seeing some key metrics within each service directly inside of the console UI. I touched on application aware intentions a little bit on, on, on the earlier slide. Uh, they're also known as uh, L7, L7 intentions or layer seven intentions. And what these are able to do is look at the actual HTTP traffic of the communicating service. What is that application trying to do? What's the headers on that? What path is it trying to access? And we can allow or disallow communication based on that. So for example, you might wanna say that Chrome browsers can't hit the slash dev path as just a random example. 
we can do that via layer seven intentions. So we're able to actually do that intention model of allowing or disallowing communication based on actual request information. These also apply to the different methods that are in place, whether it's a put or a get, any of those things can be also applied to this layer seven model. So this is gonna be really exciting to see how we can further the way that uh, service mesh is actually secured between the applications communicating. Personally, really excited for this one because we're finally bringing the ability to manage a console on Kubernetes in a Kubernetes native way with CRDs, so the custom resource definitions. So you can see an example on the right of the CRDs that apply some service default configurations, and then finally set up a splitter to send some of that traffic between environments. You've seen that in a couple of my demos that I've done historically where I've used these splitters to, to move traffic around. And it's really exciting to be able to do that in a Kubernetes native way in this case. Also, we're adding that first class support for OpenShift, so people who are in the OpenShift ecosystem will be able to uh, consume console day one. We talk about these pillars whenever we, uh, whenever we highlight console, the idea of kind of progressive application deliveries, zero trust application networking, and service level observability as kind of these big solution focuses of, of console. You know, it's, it's oftentimes the, the phrase of service mesh gets wrapped up in a lot, of, a lot of buzzword, but when you start to decompose that service mesh phrase into the capabilities you get out of it, hey, do you wanna be able to gradually roll out a service? Do you wanna be able to send 10% of traffic to a destination as opposed to just cutting over all traffic? The answers come very quickly. Of course, those are things we want. Do you want to be able to secure all your traffic with certs on day one? Of course we do. Do we want to be able to do the zero trust networking, deny all traffic that's not explicitly allowed? Of course, why wouldn't I want that? And then finally, do you want to be able to get good visualization into the services? Yes. These are, these are all things that like make up an actual service mesh, but they get lost in that, in that buzzword sometimes. So we want to really focus on these three pillars as kind of solutions focus for how we're driving the story of console. So really excited to share that console is going to be in public beta as of today. So the, you can go out and try console 1.9, take a look on console.io and you'll be able to pull it down. And you also heard previously that we were announcing the beta for our network infrastructure automation using Terraform Tech Preview. This allows you to take console and that service catalog that collects information about every all of the services inside of an environment and have Terraform drive updates against that uh, those infrastructure based on based on the contents of console. So I mentioned earlier that we were going to do a little bit of a demo. We have a great session following this one with uh, Blake and Hannah doing a deep dive on layer seven intentions and visualization. So you won't want to miss that. So in this demo, I'm going to dive into the custom resource definitions and show you how we can use those CRDs to control the flow of traffic between different versions of applications. Before we get started, let's get a lay of the land. Here we have my console environment, and I have a couple of applications that are already, already deployed into this environment. I've got an API, a database, and a front-end service. These services are part of the service mesh currently. Let's switch over to the command line and let's take a look at our actual Kubernetes environment. If I do a kube control get pods, we can see a couple of new entries in this environment. I have a controller and a webhook, webhook cert manager. These are used to translate the CRDs that I'm going to apply, the custom resource definitions, into configuration entries the console can understand. Let's take a look at our actual console's Helm chart configuration so we can see how this was set up. If we take a look at uh, this configuration file, you can see I have the controller stanza and it's set to enabled. We're going to add that custom resource definition into our deployment application, which I've done here. And I'm going to add a second one for our API. So we now have our front end and our API services set up at, with custom resource definitions. I'll write this out and apply the configuration change to the environment. We can see both of those CRDs have been created here, a front end and an API. No changes were made to our API or front end services. Since we're going to use the ingress gateway, we'll go ahead and write our configuration file out for that. So we've applied that configuration now to console. And if we take a look at our services in, in Kubernetes, we can see our ingress gateway here. And we'll go ahead and we'll issue a, a, a while loop to check the connectivity to that service. And we can see that we're returning back the version two of our API. This is gonna to continue to run throughout, uh, throughout this demo to make sure that we're connecting successfully. We'll go ahead and edit the v2 of our application and we'll add in those same custom resource definitions to enable it to be able to accept traffic. We're going to set up a new custom resource definition that's going to map out to the versions of our application. So our other one had a metadata version of uh, v1. We're going to set this up to be v2. 
Inside this CRD, we're going to set a default of the V1, but then set up two subsets. The V1 subset, followed by the V2 subset. From here, we'll add in a service splitter. This service splitter is going to be set up to split the traffic between those two subsets. So I create one named API, and I'll set a 50-50 split between V1 and V2 of these two services. We can write this file out and we'll go ahead and apply this configuration change. You'll see that we've created a service resolver and a service splitter CRD that also map back with our previous service default CRDs. This traffic splitting is in place now and if we take a look at our actual uh, curling that we had done previously we can actually see these, this splitting happening live. Let's switch into the command line and make the change for our V2 of our front end service. Here I've already configured the CRDs very similar to what I did in the API tier for my front end. I've got a service resolver and a service splitter in place. This service resolver, just like the API tier, has a default of V1 and it has two subsets set up for V1 and V2 mapped to some metadata inside of those deployments for, again, V1 and V2. My service splitter is set up for the front end service and it's set up to send 100% of the traffic to V1. This lets us apply the configuration change and still send all our traffic to the original destination just to validate that it's configured correctly. I've applied those configuration and we can see we've also deployed out the V2 of our application here. This lets me deploy both my CRDs as well as my application at the same time. So when this is deployed, the running state is, is updated automatically. We can see the front end service is still coming up. I've got six nodes up, and if I go back to the services view, it's still erroring out. It just takes a few moments to come back to come back to life. And we're good to go. If I go back into our application and refresh, we should see the old version of our application still. It's great. And we're still connecting successfully. We'll switch back in and we're going to go ahead and change that splitting configuration to send traffic to the new service. We already showed a gradual switch over, so I'm gonna go ahead and switch all traffic over to the V2 on the fly. So I'll write this out and apply the configuration change again. We can see that CRD was configured for the splitter while the other two were unchanged. And if we switch back to the API and hit refresh, we can see the new version of our application, welcoming everybody to HashiConf Digital. In this demonstration, we've shown how our new custom resource definitions for console allow us to pair our configurations for communication alongside our applications. In this demo, we showed how we could move the API tier to a version 2, all while keeping traffic intact. We then showed doing the same thing for our front end service and brought, again, those configuration files right alongside our application deployment. When we did our application deployment, we were able to watch live as that traffic changed and as we were able to roll out the new version of the service. I'm really excited for these custom resource definitions to come into play and it allows Kubernetes administrators to manage their service mesh in a way native to them. We care a lot about making sure that we can adapt to the workflows that our customers are using inside of these platforms and I really think you're going to enjoy using CRDs to manage console. I'm really excited also for you to check out the sessions that are following up this one. Blake and Hannah have a really great session around Layer 7 intentions as well as visualization of the platform. Hope you enjoyed this demo. Stay tuned for more at HashiConf and have a great day.